So, let's get started. Again, the uh, PowerPark Q610, just a brief note, uh, it's the start of 2015. This is one of our most popular sellers and we actually also do production and rentals. So if you ever need to rent these and you're in the Long Island, New York area, uh, give us a call. We have over 200 in stock for rental. Uh, we actually just did an event uh, for MasterCard in Times Square uh, this past New Year's Eve where they rented out about 140 of these for a big event we did for MasterCard up there. So uh, let's dive right into it. Let's turn on our light. Or let's go over the features. We've got the power switch to turn the light on and off. You've got your four button LCD display screen push button display with the labeling menu down, up, and enter. That corresponds to what the buttons do. DMX in and DMX out. Power in and power out. Your fuse is located right here underneath this little black cap. And if for some reason you ever did pop a fuse, just get a screwdriver. Slip it right underneath this little tab and pull up and there's your fuse. Now the light is still running because we're running on battery power right now. We're not plugged in to a power cord. And on the note of power, uh, it is a 3 amp fuse. The lights are wired in series through the fuse. So power in, power out is all drawing through this 3 amp fuse. So don't put more than uh, 300 watts total because if you do the... The formula, it's uh, watts, move the decimal point two, point two positions over to the left to figure out what the amps are. So this is a three amp fuse. You can go up to 300 watts, 300, move the decimal point two points over. That's three amps. Uh, if you go more than that, you'll blow the fuse on this, which will kill the power to this light and all the other corresponding lights after this. So if you needed to put, uh, say, say this is running at, uh, say for example, 100 watts, you would put three of these in a row off of a single power line. If you needed to add more, you would start from another power circuit, say from an outlet strip or an outlet uh, plug in the wall of a catering hall. So uh, on the top of the light here, we have our DMX antenna. We have a wireless DMX board built inside the light. So it's wirelessly controlled. You don't need to plug in the DMX cables here if you don't want to. You can, but you don't have to. And the DMX board that is inside these lights is the same exact DMX board that is inside our DMX stick. So they're completely 100% compatible. On the top of the light, we have our DMX on and off switch. That's to turn on or off wireless DMX. If it's off, it's not receiving DMX unless you plug into a DMX outlet. If it's on, the antenna is now listening for a signal from a controller. And on top here you have an LED showing a particular color and a push button. As you push this button, it changes color. Each of these colors represents a sub-frequency in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. So it would be like, for example, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, so on and so forth. You have seven different channels or sub-channels that you can switch to. And the reason we do this is if you are in a room, you're controlling your lights, you're on channel one here, and you're sending out a signal from your controller, all of a sudden your lights start doing unpredictable things, or they were blinking out, or they're freaking out. Could be somebody else in the building is operating DMX on the same frequency. So just push a button, get to a new channel, and now you'll be off the frequency they're on, and it should hopefully clear up your interference. And if not, you've got a total of seven channels, and you should be able to find a channel in there um, that works. I've never had to switch more than one time uh, to clear up any interference when I'm in halls and have a lot of DJs or bands present that are using lighting. Now let's move on to the LCD display. i um, going to zoom in here just a little bit so we can get a little bit of a closer shot here for our LCD display. Okay, so we have our menu button. Now when you press menu, the first thing you see is ADDR. That stands for address. Hit the enter button to enter into the submenu of address, and you'll see I've set my address to address 095, which is DMX starting address 95, and the reason being is that's the address I have my software set to. I have a software controller. Uh, I use Freestyler DMX as well as Sunlight Suite 2. Uh, for this example, we'll be using Freestyler. Once you find the channel you want by using the up or down arrow buttons and say 95, Hit enter two times to save and set it. Enter, enter. 
wait 15 seconds, don't push any other buttons, and it'll save that setting, or turn the light off and turn it on again, and now it is coming back on and it's stored that setting. Moving on to the next menu item after address is CHND. Hit enter. CHND stands for the channel mode. The Q610 has either 7 channel mode or 4 channel mode. 4 channel mode, you would have channel 1 is red, 2 is green, 3 is blue, 4 is amber or white, depending on what version of the light you've got. 7 channel mode, 1 is dimmer, 2 is strobe, 3 is red, 4 is green, 5 is blue, 6 is amber or white, and 7 is macros, which are premixed colors. Enter, enter to save that. Now, if you want to go back to the previous menu, hit the menu one time and that will back you up. Now we're in our root directory or our root submenu. Hit menu again to advance to the next submenu, which is SLND. That's your master or slave menu. Hit enter. And you'll see right now SLAE, I have the light set in slave mode because I was controlling it with the computer. I'm going to put it into master mode right now so that the light is in standalone mode. So I hit enter, enter real quick. Turn off, turn on. And now the light, after initializing, it's actually on now. You'll see we've got some light coming out of here because it's in standalone mode and it's preset to color 15. Moving right along, we've covered address, channel, master slave, and this is an important menu if you're going to be using the lights in standalone mode, SHND. The submenus for this are color, sound active mode, auto mode where it jumps from color to color, and fade mode where it does a gradual fade from one color to the next. So let's start with color. Hit enter again, you'll go into another submenu. And here's where you can set the preset colors. Now we're up to 15, which is all LEDs on. NANU is a custom color, a user definable color. If you hit enter, you see R255. That's the red LEDs, and they're set at the brightest setting they can go to, which is 255. If I make them go up one more time, uh, excuse me, let's go back, red, hit enter, it starts flashing to change it. Now if I hit up one more time to zero, my red LEDs just turned off because they're turned off here. So if you ever happen to use the light and after a gig you find that all of a sudden your lights are off or the colors are a little weird, they're not mixing the way they should, check your NANU setting in the color menu because you might have turned something off by accident. So there's your red LEDs, hit the up arrow button. There's your green LEDs, again to change it, hit enter. Do whatever you gotta do, hit enter, enter to save it. Turn it off and on again, or wait 15 seconds for the settings to save. Let's get back into the color menu. Uh, and then again, red, green, blue, white, or amber, back to red. So let's hit our menu button now to back out of that. Back to NANU, your manual color you can set, and then if you press up from there again, we're back to color one, which is red, two is green, three is blue, so on and so forth. And as the light starts to mix colors all the way up to 15, which is all white. We're going to save that again. Enter, enter. Now my white color is saved. Moving on to the next submenu in SHND. We did color. Next is sound. Sound active mode is exactly that. If you hit enter, You'll see 51, you can go 52 or 53. That's basically a sound sensitivity. The higher the number, the more sound active it is or more sensitive the microphone is. Um, it's not really that big of a difference, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Just if you want to set sound mode, you're in sound mode right now. And as the light picks up the beat of the music, it will change. Pretty basic. Let's back out of this. Go back to SHND. Hit enter again. There's sound we were just on. Press it forward again, we've got auto. Auto light will jump from one color to the next color, no fading in between. When you hit enter, you see SP1. This is asking you for what speed do you want to set the auto jump. One is the slowest, eight is the fastest. As you can see, the light is flickering rather quickly. So let's set that back to one. Enter, enter. Hit my menu button to back out of this. The next submenu under SHND after auto, if we hit the up arrow button, is fade. Hit enter. And again, fade will ask you at what speed do you want to fade. One is the slowest, eight is the fastest, as you see the light is changing rapidly. And a fade is a change, just like auto jump, from one color to the next, but it has a gradual fade. The first color will dim down as the next color fades up. 
So let's hit out of that and hit menu again to get out of fade. Or actually, let's advance to the next menu. We're back to color. So we've covered all the submenus in SHND. Hit the menu button to back out of it. SHND again. Let's advance forward. Hit the menu button. NADL. NADL is the master dimmer for all the LEDs, all the preset colors, basically the master dimmer for this whole light. And when you hit enter, it should always be on 255 unless you want to dim it. Say for example, you're in a room, you set it to pink or white or yellow, and it's a little too bright because it's a, it's a small room. Basically just hit the up or down arrow buttons. You can dial back your LEDs, and if you can see this on the screen, the light is getting dimmer, and to the point that it is now off. And then go down one more past zero, we'll be back to 255. And there you go, the light is snapped back on. Enter, enter to save that. Let's back out with the menu button again. So that was NADL. Next menu item, if you hit the menu button, is test. And that's to test your LEDs if they're working. Hit enter, and the light will flash red, green, blue, white, and then all the LEDs on, and then it will recycle. And this way, if you're having a problem or you're trying to diagnose the light, you can make sure for a first step that the LEDs are indeed all working. Hit the menu button to back out of that. And the menu button again to advance to the next screen, which is U11. That's really a V that stands for version 11. This is the version of the software in this light. We do make improvements and software re uh, revisions from time to time. So uh, this unit is version 11. Hit the menu button one more time. We're back to address. So that's covering all the standalone features of the light. Uh, how to pick a color. How to manu Oh, how to manually make a color. As I said, just to go back one more time to the SHND and going into the color submenu and going up one to NANU. Uh, I always like to say, say for example, you wanted to make pink. Pink is a combination of red and blue. So there's your red. Let's leave that at 255. Hit enter again. Uh, excuse me, hit it uh, up button once. Green. There's no green in purple. So we would turn this off. Enter. So it starts flashing. When it's flashing, you can adjust the value. Let's go up one. I just turned off my greens. Enter, enter to save that. Menu to back out. Let's advance to the next item, which is blue. Well, red and blue makes pink, so we leave blue where it is. Next item, white. There is no white in purple. So we would, again, hit enter. It starts flashing. We would hit the down arrow button or the up arrow button to get it to zero. Now we've turned off our white LEDs. Enter, enter to save it. Turn off, turn on again. The light will come back into the manual color that you just set. And if you can see this, this is, this is purple, um, which is red and blue mixed together. And to set that back to where it was, because if you do this on jobs or you have your roadies do this and they forget to turn it back, you go to your next job, you think you're on amber, you, you know the color six, for example, is amber, and you turn it on and it's a weird color. Well, make sure to check that your guys put the light back to full color on the LEDs. So again, let's go back to NANU. Red is good, green is off, we hit enter. Hit the up arrow button, or down arrow button one time, 255, enter, enter to save it. Back out of the menu again, advance to blue, blue is fine. White is off, enter, and 255, enter, enter. So that covers all the built-in functions in standalone mode. Now let's talk about the DMX again. Your DMX is built in. Right now the DMX is blinking red. Now the reason it's blinking red now is, if you remember, we put the light into master mode. In master mode, the light says, I have nobody controlling me, I'm gonna be in control. And if you turn on DMX, the light will actually output a DMX signal through this antenna and whatever it's set to do, if it's set on white right now, it's broadcasting DMX signal to tell any other lights that it's controlling, hey, turn white. Um, and this is great if you don't have a DMX controller and you have a bunch of these lights and say you have a, an easy job, the bride at a wedding wants the room set to amber. You set your first light into master mode, set a color, now in this case I've got it set to white, put it in master mode, turn it on, it's broadcasting that color. Now I'm going to take a second light here. You know we're broadcasting white here, so we'll turn that around so you can see. 
Now I have a second light, and say this is one of my other lights in the room, and say I've got about 20 of these. I'm going to turn it on. The light is in slave mode, and you'll notice that when I first turn it on, if you look at the LED up here, I have the DMX turned on. It initially turns a solid red to let me know what color channel I'm on, but then it starts flashing green. Flashing green means that the DMX receiver slash transmitter is in receive mode because it's in slave and it's receiving a signal. Blinking green means you're receiving a signal, you have communication with your controller. Blinking red means that this unit is the controller, it's sending the control signal. And if we turn this slave unit around, you will see that it is shining white, just like the master unit. Now, say for example, you do this, and for some reason, you turn on your light, you think everything is set. You have your DMX switch on, on the slave unit, and I'm turning on the power now. Okay, it flashes for a second, it's on. Nothing's happening. Why aren't we getting light out of this unit? Well, let's turn around and look at the back. It says PAR, it'll say either PAR or SLAVE, meaning slave. Uh, if it's in slave mode and you want them in slave mode when you're controlling your lights with a DMX controller. Let me just say this, if you're using a DMX controller, whether it be a hardware board with sliders to change the colors or a software package with a dongle box and a wireless transmitter, put all your lights in slave mode. The reason being, if something happens where your controller momentarily loses signal, it stops outputting signal and the lights are in master mode, they'll take over. As soon as they lose a the signal, they'll go from receiving to transmitting. They'll start sending out their own signal. Now, they're a lot stronger to each other because they're close to each other. They're not um, far away like they are from the transmitter. So what happens is, if this light is set to master, and this guy set the slave, this master loses the signal from the main controller. It goes into master mode itself, starts sending its own signal. Now it's controlling this light, and your controller may not be strong enough to override it. So if you set all your lights to slave mode, they're all listening. Nobody is going to take over if they lose DMX signal. The only thing they'll do, like we have here, is if they lose DMX signal, they just go dark. They won't flicker or do anything unpredictable that could ruin your show or upset your clients. <laughs> now we look here, the color is uh, like an amber color. That's because that's the frequency band that this light is on. So to get this light to work, I have to make sure that this is on the same color as this. And to verify what color we're on, you can turn the switch off and on again, and it momentarily shows what color you're on. There it goes, it says red. Now it's blinking red because it's sending a signal. Now if this was set to green, after it showed green for a second, it would still start flashing red then to show you that red means I'm sending. The other way you can check what channel you're on is by momentarily pressing the button, Oops, I actually pressed it too much now. Green, yellow, blue, pink, aqua, white. I just passed red again. There we go. We're back to red and we're flashing right now. If I press it quick, there we go. Solid red shows me that's what color I'm on. So I know I'm on red. So to get this light to work, we've got to get this on the red color as well so that they're on the same frequency. Now it's red and watch it starts flashing green and the color is white now and it's doing what the other light is doing. So this is how you would operate the lights in master slave mode uh, from one light to another without a DMX controller. Now let's get into a little bit of DMX control. I'm going to turn this one off for now and just set this aside. And we have here hooked up to our dongle box, excuse me, up to our software we're running Freestyle or DMX. We have our NTEC USB Pro dongle box connected with a USB cable to the computer. Our converter cable to go from 5 pin to 3 pin. Um, and then since we're controlling this wirelessly, I have my DMX stick transmitter, which is already plugged in and powered on. Now if you look at this, this is a transmitter. It's got a male end, but just like the lights, the transmitters and the lights, it's a transmitter or receiver. Now this light was on first. It started sending out a signal as the master. 
This is not plugged into anything giving it a signal, so it says, well, I'm getting a signal, so I'm going to go into slave mode and take that signal and pass it through to whatever light I'm controlling. So we don't want that to happen right now. So we're going to turn off the DMX on the light. Now you'll see that this green, uh, red blinking stopped, or green blinking stopped. It's no longer receiving. It's a solid red. It's not getting any signal from anybody. So it's just showing what color it's on. Now it's on red, which is great because that matches what the light is on. Let's plug in our converter cable from the dongle box. And when I do that, you'll see now that it has started to flash red. That's because it is getting signal from the computer through the dongle box into the transmitter. It's transmitting its signal from the antenna and the light will pick that up. Now, even though this light is in master mode, we're sending a signal right now and I'm very close. If I turn this on, it should start flashing red or uh, green, but it's not. It's flashing red. Now, this does happen sometimes and that's why I say always put your lights in slave mode when you're controlling with a DMX controller. So SLND, hit enter, hit the up arrow button one time and hit slave, enter, enter. Now we've saved it. Turn it off, turn it on to save the setting. The light is now blinking green and we are receiving signal now from our transmitter. And if I grab my mouse here and I go to my color wheel and I turn the dimmer up on the LEDs, I'm operating this light in seven channel mode. There we go. And let's say I pick red, there's red, let's pick blue, that's nice and soothing. Um, there we go, we now have control of the light wirelessly. You're at your DJ or your band station, you've got your computer running your programs, you've set your color, you're broadcasting from your DMX stick, and your lights all around the room are receiving signal. Now the same thing happens if I go to add a second light in the room. Now I have these both set to the same channel but you'll see again it starts blinking green and now both lights are blue. So one stick can control as many lights as you want. It doesn't matter whether you've got five lights or 500 lights. They're all basically listening posts listening through their antenna for a signal to tell them what to do. And this is your transmitter. Put everything into slave mode one transmitter from your controller, you'll have no problems. If these ever do lose signal from your transmitter, they just go dark. Now another thing I'd like to mention, uh, just in reference to the frequency, we showed you how to sync up two of the battery lights together, maybe one being master, one being slave, where the color on top has to match. In other words, this one is set to red. Uh, it's blinking green right now because it's receiving, uh, but it's on the red channel. And this one would also have to be set to red uh, so that they're in sync with each other, that they're on the same frequency band. And my transmitter, it's blinking red because it's transmitting, and any color that you set this to, once it starts sending, it'll blink red, but it's on the actual red color, just like the lights. Now, the way you would change the light color by pushing a little button to change the frequency, you can do the same thing with the stick. Basically, get yourself a sharp object, uh, maybe a paper clip or a toothpick, and there's a little hole right here above the LED and there's a little button inside. So if I press this, give it a click. Now I'm on the green color. And it showed green momentarily and now it's flashing red because I'm broadcasting, but I'm broadcasting on the second frequency green. Now, I don't know if you notice this in the background, but this light, which is a set onto the red channel, has gone dark and it's not blinking green, it's not receiving anymore and it's not flashing red because it's not in master mode so it's not sending a signal. So it is on channel red, it is in slave mode, it has gone dark, gone dark and it is waiting for instructions. Now it cannot be controlled by this unit now because we're on a different frequency. So we have to get back to the red frequency to match the light or we would change the light to green which is what the stick is now set to. So. There's green, and now it started flashing, and the light came on because we're now controlling it. So let's get our stick back to our red color because we always default to the uh, first frequency band. So now we're on a, we're on the yellow color. I'm flashing. I'm broadcasting. This is set to green, not yellow, so the lights go dark. Let's get back to red, blue, pink. 
There we go. We're back on red. Now we're broadcasting. Let's set the light back to red. There we go. The light is on, transmitting, and receiving. And that is the DMX tutorial slash Q610 tutorial on our slick par, uh, excuse me, power par Q610 light. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other further questions, please feel free to contact us at luminlights.com.